Hi, welcome back to On The Sofa at Bloom Bar Watches. I'm Eddie Bloom, this is our sales manager, Sam, and today we're gonna to be talking about Patek Philippe. Prices really came down quite a bit on Patek, uh, really since the Russia-Ukraine war started, but we're finally seeing some stability with Patek prices. Certain models are starting to sell better than others again. Um, some didn't fall quite as bad, um, but I think in the last few weeks alone, we've sold uh, quite a number. What have we, what have we got? No, what I have think we, sold? we sold about five or six Patek, again, mainly Nautilus. So we sold two 5711Rs, I think within the space of what, three weeks of each other. Uh, 726. Yeah, we did, yeah. Uh, we sold a ladies' aquanaut, the, well, the Lucy, yeah. uh, diamonds uh, around the bezel. And we recently actually sold a 5905, didn't we? we did, yeah, the, uh, the, the gold. Yeah, but actually, uh, some round, classically styled Pateks really haven't been affected as badly. Mm. They didn't really have the game that sports watches did. No, and we've noticed again a lot in the market in terms of inquiries and, and, and things like that that it is mainly those that people are starting to get interested in. I don't know if that's because obviously watch crime is, is, is quite a big thing, especially now more than ever, I think. Okay. Um, people are looking for a bit more you know, subtle watches. Well, I think also the other thing is that it's quite widely known that most Patek ADs have banned back -to -back, so the sale of yeah. back-to-back -back sports models now, which means that buyers are being driven towards classic style round Pateks, as we call them, um, as their first purchase, and certainly every other purchase, which means um, they are also becoming much harder to get yeah. hold of. Um, and so I think, um, <laughs> just a lot more demand going towards those watches now. I think historically they would have been bought by an older buyer yeah. and sports models would have, would have been picked up by the younger, by the younger new wave of Patek enthusiasts. And now that's just changing a bit due to the rules and regulations. But I think it's also quite nice to see different ages of buyers, you know, younger buyers wearing yeah, classic style Pateks. And that's what they're known for. It is, yeah. And we're talking about Patek today, but it's the same with the Rolexes as well, a bit more of the classic style yeah. of, of watches have been selling again, a couple of Daytonas on leather straps. Yeah. So um, it's nice to see a bit of a change up in the market, I think. I like it when and, you know, things go uh, a bit pear-shaped in the market. It mixes things up a bit. Um, and mm. it, as you say, it gets, it, uh, it people, gets people buy, back into loving watches. Yeah, they buy different things. You know, yeah. they, they buy, you know, not with the thought of, oh, is this going to make me X amount in the next six months or yeah. so. It's it's more, well, I like the look of this. Let's uh, buy the bullet on it. Yeah, and actually wear it. And wear it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nice to see our clients wearing their watches. They're so they're, they're now suddenly less concerned, as, as you say, as to what they're going to be worth tomorrow or next year. And yeah. now they're just wearing enjoying them and enjoying them. them. And that might be because they've lost money on them. Um, <laughs> It might be just because they're taking a longer term view yeah. and uh, for us as enthusiasts which we are um, we couldn't be dealers if we didn't really love the watches it's nice to see people absolutely actually putting them on their wrist and having some fun with them enjoying them um, we've got a nice little selection here they're mainly sports models um, because i suppose we mainly specialize in sports models although we do a bit of everything um, but this is just a little selection for what we have in stock now um, and we thought we'd just go through them and talk about um, pricing what you get for your money um, desirability, yeah. um, and maybe which are the favourites for us individually? Where do you want to start? Start here. This is a 2018 yeah. uh, Aquanaut 5164RR, if you don't know, stands for rose gold. Um, this has a travel time function, so you have a home and away indicator, uh, GMT function, also has date functions as well. Really, really lovely watch, exhibition case back, chocolate brown dial, matching chocolate brown rubber strap. Very versatile watch being rubber. Obviously with rose gold watches on a rose gold bracelet, you'd always be doing your best to avoid getting any strap scratches on the bracelet, which are very easily done. Nice thing about having some rubber, far less of a target for scratches. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, this is obviously slightly, slightly thicker than the standard rose gold Aquanaut because of the complications added into the watch itself. Yeah. So it does sit again a little bit higher to the wrist. It than, does. Than than a standard, but um, beautiful watch. Really, really, really nice. comfortable, easy to wear, um, relatively discreet. Although I know it's rose gold, and it's you know it's obviously a little bit flash, but it's also quite discreet. Not having a rose gold the bracelet, bracelet yeah, yeah, makes a huge difference. Fun. Slip it under a jumper, and no one needs to know it's there. Other watches, um, bigger, chunkier watches, can be a lot harder to hide. Yeah, I try to stay away from wearing those where possible. Price-wise, these at the peak of the market, these are probably what. 150, 160. We've just put this up for sale. It's four years old. It's virtually unworn. It's seen a tiny bit of usage in its life, but honestly, unless you were a pro, you really wouldn't know it had ever, ever been worn. Um, it's immaculate. It was bought by our previous client as an investment piece. You just stuck it in the safe and basically never wore it. I think you wore it around the house a few times. 
know which some of our clients do, it's the only yeah. place they wear them. Now, I think we've just put this up at £105,000, so a massive saving from where it was before. Good value if you're a UK buyer, even a better value if you're a US buyer buying with dollars and you happen to be here at the moment, which we're obviously seeing we are. a lot of a lot suddenly yep. since the pound's weakened. But I think a lot of watch for the money, waiting list wise. They ever give times anymore? No, but it's. Still 10 years probably, massive, five to 10 years. Five to 10 years, likely. exactly. Probably, and even then you'll need spend history. And if it's not uh, a Patek salon, you're probably gonna need to see some jewelry sales mixed in with watches and- <laughs> Big diamonds and- Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, truthfully, whatever you make on the watch, you're gonna lose on the you're gonna lose on the jewellery or the diamonds. So might actually be better off buying one on the grey market. So moving on, should we move on to something a little bit classic? Yeah. I absolutely love these. As far as color travels are concerned, this is a 6006G. You can see in the change going to more classic leather strap dress watches, very, very thin. Again, not a sports watch, right. but we have actually sold quite a few of these. Um, I mean, I, since I've been here, which is just over a year now, I think three or four of them have come through and gone. Well, actually, they've kind of maintained their price really. Mid to late 20s. 20s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mid, mid 20,000. I mean, well, the truth is, what are you going to buy from Patek Philippe for late, mid to late 20s anymore? It's a modern classic piece. Before that, they had the slightly smaller version, but they've made that design for some time now. You get a lot for your money, what with small seconds, date, time. White gold. White gold case as well. That's what the G stands for in 6006, if you don't know. Exhibition um, case back as exhibition well. Exhibition case back. I'm seeing that kind of shift into more classic classic dress watches. We have a few yeah. classic Patek dress watches now, but I like this one a lot. So do I. I mean, let's talk about entry level pricing. Now, obviously we know that the market we will work in is very warped, you know, 26, 27,000 pounds. Uh, for an entry level Patek, we accept for some people is a lot of money. We're not saying it's normality, but in the world of Patek Philippe, that's not a lot of money to get into Patek Philippe. So I suppose if you're struggling to get on the waiting list, but you really want to get your first Patek, um, you're way off being able to buy a sports model at that budget. But I think for a young buyer, this is a great, great, you know, great watch. Sub 40 year old wanting their first Absolutely. Patek. It's yeah. kind of modern and classic at the same time. It is dress up, dress down. Yeah. Um, I think if you, you do wear a suit, it's absolutely perfect for that. I think they do come on different color straps as well. I think yeah, you, can, you can pick them up on aftermarket straps as well. You yeah. can attach to them as well. Uh, you get deployment buckle as well. I mean, these are, I think, alone about well, two or three thousand. We, we had to quote for one the other day because someone wanted one, and I think it was two and a half about grand. two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, again, in white gold as well. We had a sale for 26. £6,995. I think it's a lot of watch for the money. Oh, Great, let's move on. Should we go from 5712? Yeah. Yeah. Try something sporty. Going back to Nautilus range, very similar to 5711 in terms of size. A lot more added complications on the dial. A lot more. Very split decision on the watch, as it being not symmetrical. We've sold many 5711s and 12s over a 13 year period. And I would say you can split the buyers 50 50 as to, as to who prefers one or the other. I think for me it will always be a 5711. I yeah. just love the, the, the cleanliness of the dial. 5712s, they are quite busy. They are. They've crammed a lot into a small dial and there's plenty of people who don't like the fact, as you say, that they are asymmetrical. Yeah. But I suppose on the, the flip side of the coin, if you're looking for value for money, function wise, it's the one to buy. It is. Price stability wise, 5712s have always been open to more fluctuation in the highs and lows than 5711s have. Obviously the 5711 has officially been discontinued. The 5712 has been floating on rumors of discontinuation because they share yeah. the same case. And I think that's where the problem came around is when the 5711 was discontinued, the price shot up and then for some reason automatically the 5712 price also shot up at the exact same time. Because people just assumed, assumed it, it was going And then it got priced in. And then it tanked quite hard because it's yeah. still in production. Technically, again, trying to get one is yeah. impossible, yeah. pretty much. But yes, uh, the prices have cut down quite sharp. I they think. have, they have. I mean, uh, and, you know, on rumor of discontinuation following the 5711, asking prices of these nearly hit a couple of hundred thousand they pounds. Did. I think the most we ever sold one for was mid 150s, <laughs> you know, from a speculator who assumed that they would probably peak in the in the 200 somewhere. Yeah. And I think had, <coughs> had they been officially discontinued, that would probably be correct. Yeah. Um, we've I mean, seen they, them come down subsequently. We though. have, and there's still time for that to happen. You know, we are still waiting for the official discontinuation, yeah. of whatever they bring out next, the 6711 or 6712, whatever it's gonna be. You know, and if you've got a 5712 and you might have bought it at the peak of the market, in the mid ones maybe, I really wouldn't worry. We have always thought they were fantastic watches. They've always sold very well. They've got big demand, massive waiting list. The truth is they've probably stopped producing them now, you know, just unofficially. You know, you're unlikely to get- too many 2022s no, on the market. I, I don't think we've seen one, so and we haven't seen one for a reason. Um, so if you've got one, 
don't worry about it. I mean, pricing, pricing will definitely come back at some point. Obviously, we don't know when, we can't guarantee it. Just wait until they are officially discontinued. Um, wait for that initial craziness to There go. will be, and, uh, and it will be like that. Yeah. It, will, it, will, it will jump back up quite quickly. On but the that happens, and I think you know people should be aware of that. When something gets discontinued, the market does get flooded with them yeah. you know, for a short period of time. A number do sell very quickly, um, and then prices find their level. I mean, honest thought, do you think they'll reproduce the watch? Because sure. you said it's busy and it is complex. I know, but it's not the uh, the first generation of that of, of that watch really. That you know, yeah. obviously we know there was a, a predecessor to that. I think they will bring it out in in some kind of reincarnation uh, again. So anyway, we'll wait and see. Nice to be surprised occasionally. Now, finally, we'll finish up with another Aquanaut. We have a few of these for sale at the moment. I think the reason for that is is not because people are desperate to get rid of them. Um, but I think they've had a massive boom price-wise. They went from thirty to forty thousand to what over a hundred thousand, uh, like way over one twenty, one thirty, almost overnight. And then as Patek Sports models price-wise started to come down, they've ended up coming from a hundred, you know, about one twenty to a hundred to ninety to, you know, actually we've got one priced just under eighty okay. now. Yeah. Um, and I think if you were to look further afield to the UAE or to or to East Asia, you Asia, might yeah. even find one in the Cheaper. late sixties. We've currently got a few priced at all different levels depending on their age from late 70s to late 80s i think yeah exactly or even early 90s age does play a factor with with watches and you can see quite a significant <coughs> difference in price from one that's four years old to, to one that's four months old yeah i mean the warranty is obviously a big part of that you know if the watch is still in its Patek warranty phase, then they do fetch more. And that's on that's all Patek models in general. Again, they're getting harder and harder to get a hold of. 5711s, again, 5712s that we just spoke about. So yeah. to find one that's either this year or year before, it's difficult. So I think when these were in, you know, 120, 130, maybe it was a little bit unjustifiable. You've got a white gold case and a white gold clasp, but really not that much material. If you were to melt that it's down, you'd be lucky if you had a couple of a couple of thousand pounds worth of gold. <laughs> and the rest of it is a relatively simple date only automatic movement with a rubber strap. You're not getting a huge amount of watch for your money. That said, there is a minimum that a, a Patek, you know, that, that a white gold Aquanaut can possibly be worth. Are we at that bottom line? I probably think so. I can't see these dropping a hell of a lot further than seventy thousand. I think when they first came out, from what I can remember, when they hit the market straight away, they were around 60, 50, 50 to sixty thousand pound when they first hit the market. To see them tank lower than that, it, I find it very hard to believe. Really. So do I. I actually think if that's your budget, you've got a sort of sixty to eighty thousand budget for a Patek Sports watch, and you want something relatively simple and actually quite understated, albeit quite a big watch. It's, it's bigger, yeah. It's, it's forty-two mil. Yeah. I've got what I consider to have quite average size wrist. A fifty-seven eleven fits me absolutely perfectly, or a five one six seven. I actually do find these ever so yeah. slightly big on me. So you do need slightly bigger wrist to pull them off. You will really notice the extra you do. difference you do. in the two millimeters, you do. but. As I said, if that falls within your budget, I really don't think it's a bad place to put your money. No. I don't think I don't really see you losing much on it. No, I, I can't see them going quite up to the heights that they they hit at one, you know, 100 plus. Certainly I can't see them going for some time unless they're discontinued or they yeah. change the size or something. But I can't really see them coming down from from that 70 late 70s mark. I really can't. No, exactly. For the demand on the watch alone. Well, that's the thing. You know, it's all very it's all very well priced, it's fluctuating all over the place. But that is all coupled with crazy long waiting lists. Yeah. Very, very small production numbers, and that has to stop you know, these watches really falling any further. And as we said, we've seen a lot of buoyancy suddenly in the last four weeks. We've sold, we've sold more Pateks in the last four weeks than we have really in the last five months. Yeah, exactly. Um, suddenly, it's all starting to happen again. Uh, inflation, obviously, very high at the moment. People need to counteract that inflation somehow, so they're obviously putting money into secure, well, as secure as possible, liquid assets. Yeah. Uh, but people also want tangible assets that they can enjoy. Um, and we've touched on this before, there aren't that many alternative tangible assets that you can really enjoy. Classic cars, we know, well, A, they're not everyone's cup of tea, but B, they involve huge storage costs, maintenance. huge maintenance, insurance, um, all kinds of things. And actually, in, in England, not that useful overall. Mention, depending on how rare your car is, you're not going to drive it. No. Maybe like I could see it once out of the, no, out of the you, year. As you know, I have a few old cars that I store away, and that's exactly where they stay, stored, stored away. Yeah. I've got young kids, I get very little opportunity to use them. So it's not a great asset for me. Mm. Uh, and actually, prices of those have fluctuated, if not worse than watches have throughout really? a bad time. I think uh, in the long run, I'd rather have had my money in the watches, and I certainly would have enjoyed them more. <laughs> Art and wine, 
Both require massive amounts of expertise, both open to forgeries, um, and you really need some very good advisors or really need to know what you're doing. And again, margins are huge on both those kinds of things. So it can take quite a long time to get your money back. And obviously there are, there are other forms of alternative assets, but um, as far as bang for your buck and um, enjoyability, mm. I think watches are right up there. So, Absolutely. Um, Good place to put your money. Really, that's it on uh, on the Pateks we've got in stock at the moment. We do have others. We've got some ladies Pateks. We have some other classic pieces. You'll be able to find them on the website. We can't cover all of them today. We just wanted to cover a, a small selection. But if you're looking for a Patek, whether that's a classic piece or something modern, we've usually got something in stock that would suit you. Of course, if we don't have it, we can find it. Give us a call, send us an email. If you're looking for something very specific, we will do our very best to source it for you. If you've got something you've been sitting on for some time, you're thinking of getting rid of it or upgrading it or going into something else or you bought it at retail and you've made your money and it really doesn't matter whether you make 50,000 on it or 100,000 you've done well and you're considering selling it then please give us a call we offer um, outright purchase options consignment sales consignment so and always a great way to go with the Patek because the chances are we'll be able to get you back a lot more for it because we're, frankly we're not having to outlay any money to buy it um, so we just charge you a commission for handling the sale uh, and we do a really, really nice job, don't yeah. we? Yeah, you get the same photo as you would do if we we're uploading our own stock images, you get the you know, Instagram posts, Absolutely. TikToks, yeah. YouTube. Exactly, everything's obviously insured and stored very safely. So um, whatever it is you need, please give us a call. Other than that, thank you very, very much for watching. Please comment, please subscribe, please click the notification bell and uh, if you'd like to see anything else in future, please let us know. Bye. Thank you.